that's I'm Elaine, the Midnight Crafter, and I'm actually out of town. I'm away, as you can maybe see from the change of backgrounds here, but um, I really wanted to do this video to, number one, thank you guys so, so, so much for all of your love and support and I getting me to the, where I am at this point in my channel. It's, I had no idea it was going to grow this fast. You guys are the bomb diggities. I am not kidding you. I love you all so much. I'm so grateful to you. I am speechless of my excitement for this. I mean, it's crazy. I, I really never thought it, this journey was going to be anything like what it is. A little harder than I thought, more fun than I thought, way more exciting than I thought. So anyway, thank you so, so, so much. And because of that, what I want to do is a giveaway. So when I hit 2,000 subscribers, I would like to give away whichever item of the videos that I have posted gets the most likes. So go through, pick the item that you like the best, give it a thumbs up, and um, I'm going to go through and see whichever one gets the most likes. That's the item I'm going to give away. So let's talk about today's video, that uh, today's craft. Today I am going to show you how to do a cute little hanging lampshade that can be eased, eased, can be used either with a tea light or one of those push lights, um, depending on the look you want. I've posted, I, at the end, I videoed some different looks of how it is with the different lighting. Um, and it's kind of a cross between a shabby chic farmhouse decor. So hopefully you like it and you will give it a thumbs up. And also, if you do me the big favor, hit the subscribe button below, get me closer to my goal. It's all based on you guys. <laughs> Hit the subscribe button below and the bell next to it. And um, let's see, I think that's about it. Um, yeah, let's do it. So for the ease of working on this, because we're going to have a lot of things going on, I've right now taken off this chain just temporarily, but you don't want to throw this away because we are going to be using it. It just unclips off of these. Put that aside. Next, we're going to be taking our twine here, or our jute cord or rope, and you're going to cut approximately, I mean, it doesn't have to be exact, I would say about a yard, about three feet worth of cord. Flip your basket over, and we're going to be weaving this between, over and under, between these wires. So start out with a little bit of glue. I'm actually, I think, going to start on top, yeah. Put a little bit of glue on there with your hot glue gun, and attach. You want to attach it next to, so that the black wire is showing still, the black circle, because we're going to have to... Um, weave around and if you do it on top it's not going to work out as well. Okay so we're going to start out since that one's on top we're going to put the next one under, next one over, under, over, under. Pretty easy stuff so far. And go around for about two rounds. Whoop, little runaway dealy ball. Okay, we're gonna stop right there. And the nice thing is, this is actually ending on top, which is where we started the first one. So we're gonna cut right there so those match up. Put a little glue in there and attach them. That way it looks somewhat seamless. I mean, you know, anybody that looks that hard, they're not your friend anyway. <laughs> okay, so as soon as that dries there, we will move on to the next step. Now what we're going to do is take 
I don't even know what to call these. I'm going to keep calling them Dealey Balls because that just works for me. Because in the package they're just called decorations. So the next thing, we're going to take our one Dealey Ball. You can pick whatever color you want to start with. I'm going to start with the brown ones. I don't know why. Just feel like it. And they're going to be going in between these spaces. So see how that fits in there. And we're going to add a bit of glue to the wire on each side where it's going to attach. And put in your dealy ball. <laughs> Just like that. So you can, if you choose, just go around and continue this way. What I'm going to do is finish out one section first and work that way so that I can see how my pattern is going to lay out. So the next thing, because this gets wider here and this will not be wide enough to fill the whole space, we're going to take one large and one small. One large, one small, dealy ball. Okay. I think what I'm going to do is go with a large, light-colored one and place that, let's see, I have to do this this way, I think, because you'll be able to see better. I won't, but you will. Put a little glue again on our wire, and then this time you're also going to put it to the top here so that it supports it on the ball just above that you put in just before. Hold that there until it dries, until that glue hardens, which is pretty quick. Now we have just enough space for one of the little ones. So I'm going to go with a dark brown. Now these, because they're just wrapped twine or whatever they are, they come in slightly different sizes. So pick something that's going to fit the best for what you're doing. I found one that's small that should fit in there nicely. Now we're going to put glue on the wire. as well as where it's going to be attaching to the top ball and to the bottom ball, or the side, I should say, the side next to it. Try as best you can to hide, I mean, not go crazy with the glue. Try and kind of stash it in there a little bit. It, it may show a little bit, but it's okay. Again, if people are looking that close and criticizing, you don't need that. Alrighty, so we're going to continue down like that. I think now what I'm going to do here is go with a large light colored one and continue my pattern that way and probably with the biggest of the small ones to go in here. So just kind of fit in the pattern that works for you, however you can get them to fit. Now you can see there's a little space between on both sides. Don't worry too terribly about that. You can just glue onto this upper one because you're not gonna, as we go down, it's obviously getting bigger. You're not gonna be able to completely get those to fit in there. Okay, so there you have one section. Now we're not going all the way down because what we're going to do is the same weaving technique with the rope. We're going to do this down at the bottom which will be great too because it will help support these that don't reach all the way down. So because we're not going to be able to really exactly measure out what we're going to need, what I would say, and it's okay if we have a little extra, is give a couple of wraps around just the bottom of your um, wire basket here to give us a general idea. I'm going to cut enough for three times around. We may not even go three times around, but rather have enough than not enough. So that's about three times around, very loosely as you can see. And give a cut. And 
and we're going to start weaving. And we started on top, so we're going to go under, so go through there. Under, over, whoop, under, my goodness this is squirrely. And my dealy balls are flying all over the room. So because we don't want this to get all over the place, we're going to add a little bit of glue now that we've got this kind of in place. attach it at each wire. Just a little bit there, a dot. And continuing on with our pattern. Now as we reach the end point here, what I'm going to do actually is put a little glue down, probably not right up, butted up against there, but just next to the end of the bottom piece. That's just going to be to hold our upper piece in place here as we weave, because now we're going to be going underneath here. Also, again, we're going to be putting glue at the wire, so underneath here, to glue this piece of rope in place. Now this second row you don't want to push it down, otherwise it's going to be hidden behind this one. So it's going to be standing a little above on its own. So it will also have a little space in there. We're going for our third time around. Okay, so we're back at our end point. We've come over and now we're going to cut off this piece and hide it kind of right behind here underneath so it's not really showing too much. So we're going to cut this off here and glue it back behind. That's what we've got. And that's what we've got. And we're going to carry on now with our, our dealy balls around the rest of the pattern. I'm actually going to go with a light colored one and put it in there and kind of alternate. So this will just be kind of an unusual. Now if you want to do all dark, you want to do all light, you want to alternate the pattern differently than I did, awesome. Make it your own. That is the best part about creating. So this time it looks like we're going to have space up here. That's okay. That's what's going to make this unique and unlike anyone else's. So there we go with two sections done, and I'll be back when I finish out the rest of it. Now I decided to go around this way just because I'm a little impatient and I want to see progress. So what I noticed, what we end up with here is that one of these is going to be the same color. So I just pick one. I don't know. I'm going to go with the dark one. Why not? So here's how it looks so far. This also would make a stinking adorable, I was realizing it, basket for like a farmhouse decor for outside if you put maybe some moss in here, some cute flowers coming out of it. It would be really, really cute just for that too. So you're welcome. There's another DIY within your DIY. <laughs> okay, so. Anyway, back, let's focus, bring it back together here. So the next thing we're gonna do is attach the base of our uh, chandelier lampshade slash whatever you wanna call it, and that is our wreath. What we're gonna do now is kinda add some glue where these um, tabs are that are sticking up. Add a pretty fair amount, careful not to do too much that it drips down. Work a little quickly because when you put this hot glue on metal, boy, that cools up quick. And center and then push it down. Okay, it's 
So it's pretty well centered on there. This still is looking adorbs for a bowl with plants. I don't know, I might have to change this DIY. No, okay, anyway, here we go. So it's right now gently attached, but we're gonna find any spots that look like they're close to hitting the wire and throw some extra glue on there and press the wreath down onto it. But we're gonna set this aside and we get to take out our aggressions on a poor little defenseless pillowcase. <laughs> now I couldn't decide which one of these pillowcases I wanted to use. May use both, may use one. It's up to you, whatever goes with your color scheme at home. I think I'm actually gonna do the blue one because I just think it might be, I don't know, more versatile. What we're gonna be doing with this is tearing this into little thin strips. Make a little slit here, but make sure you cut through that piece, otherwise you're not going to be able to tear, as I was just struggling to tear. And then just have at it and tear. Oh. Okay, we have that end cut off. We're going to be making little slits here, about probably an inch or so. inch or so in width. Don't worry about these at all being perfect. Probably the less perfect they are, the better. And then have at it again. Oh my goodness, this is so satisfying in a weird sort of way. Okay, we're going to start with those strips. If we need some more, we'll cut more. I'm going to fold this in half and cut. And that is the length you're going to be needing. So each strip will give you two pieces. So once you've taken out all your aggressions and you're a very happy camper, <laughs> I don't really have any aggressions, just saying. Anyway, you're going to take your piece, we folded it in half and we cut it, right? Then we're going to fold it in half again and cut it again. So your length will be, I don't know, approximately seven, eight inches probably. We're going to be taking these pieces and our eight inch piece, folding it in half and tying a knot right about center. Just like that. These are going to be little fringes that we're going to hang. What we're going to be doing is gluing those just hanging down from the bottom of this as a little hanging fringe. So you're going to take your little piece, pinch it, and put a dot of glue right on the top of it and attach it somewhere centered on your wreath base. I'm going to start putting them about, I don't know, maybe every two inches apart and then we can fill in more from there. Here's our woolly little creation so far. The next step will be to put in our hanging little lantern, this piece right here, and you're going to need a pliers to do that because we're going to need to temporarily remove this handle from here. Removing the handle shouldn't be too hard. Um, right here you're just going to, let's see, I don't, can you even see that? Anyway, it's a U-shaped little thing and you're just going to pull it apart enough that you can slide that out of there. And then we're going to be passing that through the top and on the inside where the wire part is, directly across from each other. So 
try not to have it because it's going to otherwise it'll hang kind of off balance and we're going to push that all the way down in flip it over and reattach our little jar here So the last thing we're going to do is take our chain that we removed in the beginning and we're going to attach it so we have something to hang our, our shade from. When you attach your chain, make sure that at the top that you have them laid out in such a way that they're not all twisted together so that they're in the proper um, hanging position, I guess. Once you get those attached, you add a little bit of glue so that they don't shift around and that way it will help to keep your lampshade from getting lopsided. When you glue the chain pieces, go ahead and also put a dab of glue where your wire from your lantern is so that that doesn't slide around either. Here, so I'm okay. actually going to be adding a little bit of some floral stuff in there. Um, you can add whatever colors you want to coordinate with your little fringes. I'm going to go with something kind of subtle so that it's not overstated and too out of control. Um, I'm using these, I'm pulling them directly off and I'm going to glue them in various places. I might also use a bit of these hydrangeas pulling off individual little flowers and kind of attaching them in various places, but this is going to be one of those things that I have to sort of Place them, look at it, and see, and that's going to also be up to you as much or as little as you want, none or extra or whatever works for you and your decor and your, your style and your taste. Okay? So here it is, our very girly girl chandelier. Girly girl, kind of almost a shabby chic, but yet a somewhat farmhouse-y. So in all of my excitement and enthusiasm, I totally forgot to tell you what to do to even enter to win. <laughs> so what you need to do, give a thumbs up to the video of the item that you like the most and would want to win. And then down below in the comments, write, I want that exclamation point, because I love me my exclamation points, as you know. So then after that hit the subscribe button and those three things will make you eligible to win whichever items get the most whichever item gets the most likes so again one more time you're going to hit the like of the item you want right i want that exclamation point in the comments below and then hit the subscribe button